All right, this next segment's important. Everybody ready? Call your friends. Text them right now. McGroin Army. This is, we're doing a mandatory roll call right here. Everybody's got to show up. We're going to get the Bongino Army shirt on today. I can't tell you this enough. If we win this election in November, Donald Trump's about to take office. That November to January period where he's the president-elect and is not sworn in yet is going to be absolute chaos like you've never seen. Get ready for the rent the riots I've got two short clips by Benz, Mike Benz, who's great at analyzing the deep state, who explains exactly the deep state model for this. This is going to be a banger coming up next. Stay tuned. Okay. Folks, they are not going to peacefully step aside if they lose in November. There is absolutely zero chance. Do you remember the Time Magazine article? I'm going to get to it in a few minutes. So <laughs> Justin's like, wait, that's it. There was a Time Magazine article put out after they stole the 2020 election where they actually bragged about how they did it, uh, how they did it with unions, with workers, with people on the street. I'm not knocking unions, but I'm just saying like there are, you'll see in the article, they actually talk about it. Corporations, how they all got together with the deep state to steal it from Donald Trump. Keep that blob of people in your head as you listen to cut one of Mike Benz talking about how the Democrats around the world, liberals and even swampy Republicans in the blob, use these rent a race riots all around the world to cause chaos. They're getting ready for one right now. That's why he keeps promoting the fine people hoax. Here's part one of Ben's. Check this out. I recently did a lecture. Actually, for the past two weeks, I've been doing these long streams going through the use of racial rent of riots by our foreign policy establishment very deliberately in order to force political outcomes around the world. And I've been going through CIA operations manuals, through special forces, Spectus documents to show the very strange similarity between the politically motivated racial rent of riots orchestrated by our intelligence services and what happened in Minneapolis in the summer of 2020 folks this is not new intelligence operatives deep state blobsters state department folks international bureaucrats globalists ngos organized labor i'm not talking about the workers on the ground you'll see what i mean in a second in case you think i'm just throwing this out they actually bragged about it. i'm talking about the management there street muscle they know how to do these rent a racial riot moms. There's a reason, although Biden has been discredited by Snopes. Do you have any idea how left wing Snopes is? It's Snopes, in case you don't know, it's, you know, it's like the slope of a line with an end Snopes. Snopes is an outright communist site. That's how leftist they are. Even they debunked. The Trump called these white supremacists fine people. To, he did not. He actually explicitly condemned them. So why does Biden keep saying it? Because they're getting ready for these racial rent -a riots in this November thing. And by the way, to any of these lefty scumbags out there who want to write, yeah, conspiracy theory, Dan Bongino, the left is going to riot. I am, what's our record on conspiracy theories, Justin? It is absolutely, are you risking your... Well, you're not risking, you don't have a reputation. But to the Dan Arkins of the world, who are like, Dan Bongino's a conspiracy theorist saying Trump's in danger. Ah, and then he got shot in the head. Dan Arkin, still no apology. I'm warning you, you write that piece, I'm going to be, you go ahead and do it. Knock yourself out. Nobody cares about what you say anyway. You are going to be the subject of my show when what I'm telling you is going to happen, happens if he wins. Guaranteed. These rent-a-riot mobs the Democrats know exactly what they're doing. Here's part two where Benz describes exactly how the racial rent riots are done, not only here, but are around the world, done around the world in conjunction with the deep state. And then when I show you the Time article next, organized labor, CEOs, corporate America, the blob, you're going to be like, wow, did that happen here in 2020? Check out part two. 
a capacity build connections into the African workers who are working for Chinese companies, who are working in the African government transportation sector, who are working you know, in all the different trades. And they, they quote, inflame tensions against the Chinese in order to have the Africans cut off their labor force. They, in the hypothetical, they brag about how they got 60% of Chinese businesses, uh, the labor force to leave. And they did this using U.S. taxpayers' money, actually. They ended up bribing, in this hypothetical, the rioting workers in Africa with USAID job fairs, giving them no-show jobs, basically paying them to take to the streets and riot. And then essentially the State Department goes back to the, so you can see how this all works together. You have the, the intelligence services, you have the military, you have USAID, and you have the State Department. The State Department ends up going back to the African government and the African government basically to get the riots to stop and to bring peace back they uh, they end up acquiescing and canceling the port deal. This is government, NGOs, corporations in Africa working together to stoke racial hatred to get some political goal. Sound familiar? Political goal. Stop Donald Trump. Corporations, organized labor, the blob, the deep state. Oh, shit. That happened here. And they even wrote about it. Time magazine, Molly Ball. The secret history of the shadow campaign that saved the 2020 election. I've never seen this before. I've never seen this before. Justin's like, we've cut this thing so many times that like he doesn't even need to cut it anymore. Let me just read to you how the Democrats, after they stole 2020, actually went and uh, bragged about what they did with the blob. Quote, meaning they actually wrote this. This is not a Dan Bongino conspiracy theory. They actually wrote about it and bragged about it. Quote, there was a conspiracy unfolding behind the scenes, one that both curtailed the protests and coordinated the resistance from CEOs, resistance to Trump. Both surprises were the result of an informal alliance between left-wing activists and business titans. <laughs> Sound familiar? The pact was formalized in a terse little notice joint statement of the Chamber of Commerce and AFL-CIO published on Election Day. Chamber of Commerce and the C AFL-CIO and unions? Aren't they supposed to be enemies? Both sides would come to see it as sort of an implicit bargain inspired by the summer's massive, destructive racial justice protests. Ah! In which the forces of labor came together with the forces of capital to keep the peace and oppose Trump's assault on democracy. Everybody just T.O. for a second. Time out, okay? Do you hear what Ben's just said? Nobody does the deep state breakdown better than this guy. That there is this globalist model. It's like a paint by the numbers of how to cause enough societal strife. You know what we need? Hey, where's Guy? Is he around? Guy, can you pull for tomorrow? Remember Ehud Barak? That thing about when he, we need to pull that for tomorrow. Folks, this is a glow. Do you have it? Yes. I'm going to take a break. Do not go anywhere. Before. Folks, this is killer. Leftists and swampies around the globe have this paint-by-the-numbers model. Business titans, labor, swampies, bureaucrats, non-governmental organizations. When they can cause enough of a ruckus in the street with very little people, they can, they can basically steal an election and enforce a political aim. They know exactly what they're doing, and I promise they're going to do it again. You need to be ready for it especially Republicans up on Capitol Hill and at the state level. You need to be ready to start making arrests if people break the law and you know they're going to. I'm going to play this for you in a second. This is a globalist leftist. He's, uh, it's Ehud Barak, so from, from Israel. Obviously. But I'm gonna, what he says here is absolutely true. Stay tuned. Quick break, and I'll get to that last break of the show. Here's what I'm talking about. These globalists that run these little racial and identity politics rent -a mobs that they use to obtain a political goal, steal an election, destroy a company, destroy a city, whatever it is, they know that you only need an infinitesimally small portion of the population to take to the streets. This is why far left liberals and socialists value street muscle so much. Record this one, save it and send it to your friends. Check this out. So it's a clash. There's a top-down uh, regime change. 
using the tools, the, the legal tools of uh, democracy, facing a counter revolution from, from bottom up. And uh, we will win. I'm confident of it. Um, because I know our people, and we have uh, even empirical evidence for this. Some uh, 11 years ago, in uh, two ladies, scholars, Chenwes and Stefan, published in uh, Columbia, a, a research they made of uh, hundreds of civil protests uh, in the last uh, over 100 years, from 1900 to 2006, and they found a common denominator. All these uh, protests which succeeded, where they reached a, a level of 3.5 of the population, percent of the population, which is, which ends up to be about 8 percent of the adult population, uh, tenaciously and persistently keeping the protests, boycott, uh, civil disobedience, and so on. At the end, the government either fall or capitulate. And this is exactly, we, we already crossed this number within less than three months. So we are heading in the right direction. The publication called Why Civil Resistance Well. Why civil, re notice how they call it resistance, right? Not rioting or nothing else. Why civil resistance works. Less than 10% of the adult population, if you can get them to take to the streets. Folks, I'm just asking you as friends, please, in the name of all that's good, please be ready for this November to January period. Okay, you know what? Fair question. Someone in the chat should say this. Someone in the chat should say, Dan, well, what do you mean be ready? Well, number one, for you on the individual level, you should be personally prepared. You should. Stock up on some stuff. I'm not telling you you got to build like a bomb chamber or anything. Just stock up on some stuff. You may or may not need it. If you don't need it, fantastic. I don't want to be dramatic. However, to people out there who have power, power is going to be a commodity during this changeover period. Local sheriffs, please be ready for street unrest. We have a great sheriff here. He is an absolute constitutionalist. You protest, knock yourself out, have fun. You step one foot in that street, he doesn't care if you're a conservative, liberal, communist, doesn't matter. you're getting locked up. And you know what? In my county, we never have any problems. You want to stop the contagion from spreading and the riots from spreading? You stop it day one. When I was in New York City, Rudy Giuliani was the mayor. And let me tell you something. Even after Giuliani, they kept his crowd control plan. You know what the crowd control plan in New York was? You speak out, assemble. It is your constitutional God-given right, period. However, the first, it's not your right to throw a bottle at a cop. That's called assault. The first bottle of brick that gets thrown, dude gets arrested. The second bottle, that dude gets arrested too. We had very little of that in New York or anywhere else. So this is what I mean by be ready. Do not wait on national Democrats and Republicans and, you know, the moderate middle to save you or whatever. They will not save you. It is subsidiarity. Locals, be ready. County commissioners, city mayors, be ready and be ready today. That's what be ready means. Talk to your police chiefs. Talk to your deputies. Talk to your sheriff. Hey, man, if Trump wins the election and just say there's some kind of civil unrest, do we have a plan? And what does it look like? Because these people are freaking crazy. And in a late addition to the show, folks, we are running against a communist now. That's why, yes, I want to see their convention fail abysmally. We are running against an authoritarian tyrant in Kamala Harris. You know, our good friend Kanako with the great on Twitter, right? A great account to follow. Did you see what they proposed in the Democrat platform, Kamala Harris? This is Kamala Harris. This is their platform at the DNC. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, a 25% tax on unrealized capital gains. I get it. I get it. This is not the most sexy topic in the world. However, folks, quick econ, not even 101, 0. 0.000256. A 25% tax on unrealized capital gains. Do you have any idea what that means? He says, imagine buying shares in the stock for $100,000. Their value rises to one hundred fifty. Wow, you're doing okay. 
Under Kamala's plan, you'd owe taxes on the $50,000 gain, even though you didn't sell the shares or made any actual profit. Now imagine the stock's value drops back to 100 the following year. <laughs> You're not going to get a refund. And then for those of you out there on the left saying they would never apply that 25% tax on unrealized, meaning gains you didn't even make. That's what unrealized means. They're just paper. They said the same thing about the income tax. Folks, you have equity in your home. How do you feel paying a 25% tax on maybe 100000 in equity you have in your home? But Dan, I didn't sell it. Exactly. What if the market crashes? That's what you're going to get, the double barrel middle finger. Folks, we are running against communists. Price controls. This is unrealized capital gains tax. That's got a name. It's called theft. You didn't make anything. It's just paper. You didn't cash it out. The stock or the housing market could crash. You're not going to get a refund. They're stealing your money. This is what communist Kamala is running on right now. Folks, they are straight up liars too. They are lying about everything. I told you the other day, their entire platform is running away from stuff they're doing now, pretending they're not doing it. Here, thank you, Libs of TikTok, for this. Here is Biden last night. I wanted to get to it yesterday, but it's important to get to today. Showing you again, Democrats, vote for who you want. I, I, I can't tell you not to vote. Do your thing, I, whatever. You want to destroy the country, I can't help you anymore. I'm just telling you, you are voting for a bullshit artist. Everything Trump is running on now, he ran on 2020 and 2016. Whether you love him or hate him, he is what he is what he is. Your people are full of it. They are liars. Here's Biden ridiculously claiming that they were the ones who were pushing to open up the schools after they destroyed our kids during COVID. They were? Are you sure? Here, listen to this. In the pandemic. Kamala and I help states and cities get back their schools back open. <laughs> That's true. That's next. Michael says they're going to start taxing you on unrealized dependents yet. The kids you don't even have yet. But I guess we're taxing you for six kids, seven kids. Are you guys be in real trouble. Evita comes from a large family. Are there, are there nine? So forget it. Evita be bankrupt. We're taxing you on nine kids on the model from your parents. I don't have any kids. Unrealized kids is not a thing yet. It's not a thing. Folks, we're running against commies, and they're liars. That's total BS. Kamala wanted to open up the schools with Biden? Hat tip, libs of TikTok. Watch this bullshit. Here's an actual ad they ran at the time attacking Trump for, wait for it. <laughs> this is too much fun for opening up the schools. Watch yourself. New cases in a single day. Four million cases. Desperate to reopen schools because he thinks it will save his re-election. We have to open the schools. Critical shortage of PPE. Threatening their funding. When they don't open their schools, we're not going to fund them. Ignoring how the virus spreads. Risking teachers' and parents' lives. Going against the advice of experts. It's had very little impact on young people. Do you trust him to do what's best for our children? Because this is not a test. Trump is failing. I aced it. I aced the test. Uh, again, this is the receipt show. This is all we do is receipts and facts and data. That's all we do here. We give opinions. We tell you their opinions. We tell you when we're speculating. But it's my job to be... I'm, I feel like I'm kind of a political lawyer in a way. It's my job to present a case to you. You're the judge, right? You're the judge. I have to present a case to you, and I have to bring facts. Biden is full of it. I mean, him and Kamala ran on, they, they ran against Trump opening the schools. Democrats made ads about it. He was attacked ruthlessly for telling people to open the schools. Everything they're telling you is bullshit. Everything. Here's the UAW president. And by the way, let me just put this out there. I have zero problem at all 
I'm not running for office, folks. I'm not looking for votes. I have no reason to BS you. I have zero problem with unions. My brother's in a union. My dad was in a union. None. I have problems with people being forced to join any organization. That's it. And also, I have a problem with union leadership who don't speak for the union. I know people who work in auto plants. They love Trump. They can't stand their leadership. Here's the UAW United Auto Workers guy saying one of the dumbest freaking things I have ever heard in my entire life that, hey, man, this is a, just a manufactured border crisis. I don't know. I haven't seen any, like, rapists or anything. Oh, really? Really? You haven't? That's, that's kind of odd because there's, like, a thousand news reports. You're, you're the president of a major union, right? Do you read the freaking newspaper? This actually happened. You want to vote for this? Check this out. Um, you know, this this manufactured border crisis they talk about now that I, I just, I'm sorry. I mean, I look at that. I see all, I don't see rapists and murderers and, and invaders. They're not invading our nation. UAW guys, respect, respect, full stop, much respect. That guy is a tool. That guy is a disgrace to your organization. That guy, regardless of who you vote for, that guy's a bullshit artist. Either he's a moron, which is possible, who doesn't read the newspaper and should not be leading your union, a powerful one, or number two, he's a liar. There is no option C. He's a moron or a liar. He hasn't seen any rapists or like criminals or anything. This is just from like yesterday. Bill Malugin on Twitter. ICE Boston arrested a Brazilian illegal who was caught and released at the border. Is now charged with attempted murder, stalking, and kidnapping of a victim in Massachusetts. This is one of hundreds of these we could put out there. And for the UAW clown, Joker, maybe you're like, oh, Bill Malugin works at Fox. So uh, he's just making that up or something. Really? Here's the United States government's Inspector General report that just came out yesterday. Did you see this? They lost over 200,000 kids at the border. And if you read the end, it says they can't even guarantee they're not being sex trafficked. Hey, UAW, dipshit, maybe read this, you moron. Where's Kamala on this? Good question. Yeah, I mean, she is the border czar. Does Kamala know where these kids are? No, she's too busy working on root causes. Maybe like root causes are get to the United States and break the law. So we can sex traffic a bunch of kids? Yes, that's it. Yeah, Guy brought up a good point. Truly, he says, if we elect her, it'll be hopey changey. She'll definitely change what she did before, which sucked before into a less sucky plan. Folks, they lie to you about everything. Everything. Nothing they tell you is true. And they just don't care. They really don't care. You know what? Put up the Tim Walls thing right now. I know we're going to get Here's Tim Walls. Stolen Valor, Tim Walls, the New York Post article. Tim Walls, her VP candidate, who apparently now has lied about combat, or at least implied he was in combat when he wasn't. He has not told the truth about his rank in the military. He's apparently, like, fabricated portions of his life. Now we find out another one. These people lie to you about everything. Tim Walls' wife confirms she didn't undergo IVF, despite Walls heavily suggesting she did amid Democrat claims that the GOP seeks a ban. There is nothing these people will tell you that's actually true if they think there's a political gain to be gained from rioting and lying. Trump just is what he is, man. They're just lying. There he is. Tampon Tim. Emojis in the chat. Emojis in the chat. Holding up like Zeus, his famous tampon in the men's room. You want more of this? Is this what you want? Tampons in the boys' room. Taxes on the house you haven't sold and the stocks you haven't sold. A massive corporate tax hike that's going to filter into higher prices. <laughs> you folks in the chat are the best. Folks, price controls. You want more of this? You want children sex trafficked at the border? You want union leaders who donate to Democrats bullshitting their members about a massive crisis going on at the border? You want more of this? You want more of this? Here's the teachers union president, Randy Weingarten, one of the most dangerous people anywhere on the globe. Your kids are years behind, years behind 
due to school closures because this lunatic kept the schools closed as she tried to shake down the taxpayers for more money. Here she is again, screaming like a freaking deranged lunatic, like Banshee from the X-Men, screaming, breaking glass everywhere. Oh, they got the walk! Oh, they got the walk! Listen to this maniac. You want more of this? Vote Democrat. Check this out. Or family leave, or health care, or housing. Any of the things that are important every single day, we need to fight to get Kamala Harris and Tim Walsh elected. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are we going to walk? Are we going to knock? Are we going to get them elected? Thank you. Justin's brought up a good point. Did we mention this woman is in charge of the people in charge of your kids? I love teachers. Love them. My kids' teachers are awesome. Love you. This woman's crazy. You want more of this. You want to get BS. You want to get lied to. You want to pay a 25% tax on the house you haven't sold, your stocks, your pension fund, your freaking art collection, your baseball card collection, your comic book collection. All going to be unrealized capital gains. You want to pay a massive corporate tax in the form of higher prices? You want more money printing, more inflation, an open border, sex trafficking, fentanyl, a war on cops, rent the riots? Vote Democrat. No, do it. That is your party. I can't stop you. Here's another lunatic. By the way, Kentucky. Anyone in the chat from Kentucky? I'll give you a second to respond. I love Kentucky. Been there many times. Where's that place? Is it in Lexington where they have the street and and it's got a covering over the street and you can like hang out in the bars? It reminds me of Broadway in Nashville. I think it's in Lexington. I love Kentucky. It is an amazing state full of diehard patriots. We got any Kentucky folks? Yeah, we do. Good. Welcome, Kentucky folks. What the hell is this guy doing as your governor? This guy's a freaking lunatic. Here's Andy Bashir. How did how do we elect a Democrat? This guy's a demon rat. He's not even like a moderate Democrat. Here he is at the DNC kissing the ass of like the pronoun guys and all these other crazies, pretending to represent Kentucky, and implying at the end that J.D. Vance's family should experience like rape and a crisis pregnancy themselves. This guy is nuts. Check this out. I mean, think about what what some people have had to go through because of these laws. Uh, I mean, Janie Vance calls pregnancy resulting from rape inconvenient. Like inconvenience wow. is traffic. I mean, it is. Uh, it, make him go through this. I- um. No. No, Andy. You bag. I don't want you, your family, any Democrat, Republican. Let's just put a universal anyone at all. To have to go through a crisis pregnancy at all, moron. You think he'd apologize? Now he doubled down. Kentucky, this guy's a disgrace. You should be respectfully lighting up the phone lines today, telling this guy to freaking resign. What a moron. I love you, Kentucky, but man, what the hell? What is with this clown? I want to tie to the beginning, the end back to the beginning. That Ben's clip is really important about the racial rent the riots. Folks, I'm telling you now, it is going to happen if we win. November to January. I hope I'm wrong. I know I'm not. There is a reason they're dialing up the racial hatred. They are going to use it to employ it as a messaging mechanism for these rent the riots to try to stop Donald Trump from taking power. There is a reason you are seeing clips like this left and right. Here is ABC's Lindsey Davis, an absolute disgrace to humankind. Again, implying that there's some connection from Trump to the Ku Klux Klan or something. This is, just watch the clip. It's, check this out. As you know, uh, President, uh, well, former President Donald Trump is expected to go campaign in Howard, Michigan 
tomorrow. Uh, many people are aware that a month ago uh, in Howell, KKK protesters marched in the streets with the, the white robes on uh, and, and suggested that they support um, Donald Trump. I'm curious if, if you make anything about that connection and him going in particular to Howell tomorrow. So she's asking the disgraced governor of Michigan if Trump should be allowed to visit Michigan because some dipshit showed up a while ago in some like clan hoods. I wonder, was it the old governor of Virginia, the Democrat guy? I don't know. We never found out which one it was, the blackface or the Ku Klux Klan. I'm not sure. Was he involved in that? Or was it the Patriot Front? The Patriot Front. Trump's not allowed to visit Michigan now? Lindsey Davis, by the way, Donald Trump should not debate on ABC. When that lady apologizes, Lindsey Davis, Donald Trump to the team, do not debate on ABC after that disgrace. Donald Trump was asked a question about this yesterday and dropped the bomb. By the way, the reporter here is not trying to race him. This is Fox's Aisha Hosni. She's asking about that interaction to give him the opportunity to respond. A lot of people are like, race baiting report. That's not what she's doing at all. Matter of fact, listen to the, you'll see what I mean. Just listen to the exchange, but watch Trump just drop this bomb. He is really, really good at this. Check this out. Who was here in 2021? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Now, let's see the JD one. Who was here in 2021? Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Folks, I saw a, a segment on Fox and Friends this morning. After I get out of the cold plunge, the shrinkage resolved and the red lobster style skin went away. Okay, <laughs> Justin says to me, is this going to be a bit, Dad? Are we doing the cold plunge? Maybe. We'll see, just for a little bit. But I'm still trying to adjust to the whole new house thing, right? You can tell the kind of energy. It's weird coming over here now. It's kind of like I have a, little, I have a commute. It's very long. How long is my commute, Justin? Like 30? No, it's at this. Like two hours. It's a long way. It's a long way from home. I, 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 I get the show in my head. I'm like all wired up, ready to go. But I'm watching this segment on Fox & Friends this morning. And I forget who it was. Forgive me. I'll try to find it. But the guy, I think, I swear he stole my talking point there. Where he was like, these campaigns aren't about platforms anymore. They're about short sound bites. I'm like, oh my gosh, he listens to my show. He totally fleeced that. The Trump team, him and Vance, do sound bites better than anyone. I want you to listen to J.D. Vance yesterday. He's asked by a reporter about his debate coming up with Tampon Tim. This is how it's done, folks. This is how it's done. Check this out. I want to know how you were prepping for a debate with Tim Walls, who has described himself as a bad debater. Who's helping you, and how are you prepping? Well, I found a good friend from back home who embellishes and lies a lot, and I'm having him stand in for Tim Waltz. That's what we're doing during our debate. This is how it's done. This is how it's done. Folks, we got a really, really good chance to win. No red wave talk. However, do not get baited into this Kamala phenomenon crap. It is disgruntling and disenfranchising way too many people who bought into the media bullshit. She is as bad a candidate as you think. What is our job from this point in the remaining 70 days to the election? Everyone in the chat, every day we're going to remind you, what's your job? Execute. That is it. Execute. You and 10 people are going to vote, and you're going to get them there. That's your job. You're going to email them. You're going to call them. You're going to send them a DM. You're going to social media message them. At least 10 people. Execute, and we will win. Don't execute and we will lose. Gun owners, truck owners, freedom lovers, sports fans, you have a home. It's with the Donald Trump movement. Execute. What a show. Thing.